How's it going, beautiful and amazing people? This is Scott Takai, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I did an interview with Mark Aiello. I, Aiello, Aiello, Aiello. So we decided to collab together in this podcast slash interview. I'm actually wrapping up editing it right now because and sorry for the bad video quality i've been a little strapped on time lately but um, basically we just talk about how he's a film school graduate and i actually didn't end up going to film school and just comparing and contrasting the differences between the two my experience not going and his experience actually going and i think there's a lot of cool things that you guys can learn from this interview and if you enjoyed it be sure to show mark some love i'll be putting his youtube link in the description below and uh yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. I'll take you away to where the sun shines. So bright, so bright. You can stare at the sun. But yeah, so yeah, I was at Fairfield, yeah, for four years. Um, made some friends, made a couple independent student films, and basically kind of just graduated like I think any other student would from any college. Just kind of like they graduate and they're kind of like, now what? How did film school and like working on that film and then even like comparing it to um, now that you're out of school and w how you're applying like the things that you learn now, like how different it is from the school environment, from like the real world environment. Learning in the school environment, you basically only get, I think, what's available to you there. So like whether that's uh, the classes you're taking or the just your experience making student projects. I guess you're only going to learn what's um, within that sort of space. So we had, I'll be just quite honest, like the, a lot of the teachers we had, like, I kind of questioned their credentials in film. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was started basically by a couple priests. Um, one of them was good. The other was, that's a whole different can of worms story we can you know there's a real big scandal around him actually don't worry it's not like a uh you know jeffrey epstein type thing it's more like a <laughs> it's more like a, it's not uh, a catholic a, it's not a catholic priest sort of situation yeah not that you're too uh, catholic kids. priest situation this is uh this more has to do with like money um i guess like kind of oh, okay. like uh swindling that sort of deal but mm -hmm. they were basically i don't know where they were sort of getting getting these uh lessons from like they didn't have any real like film experience. Uh, we ended up getting a couple good professors at home. One of them did have actual independent film experience, knew about the industry. But for the majority of my time at that school, it was mainly with um, a couple, like some people that really just didn't have much of that real world, I guess, filmmaking experience that um yeah we're talking those are the priests priest. yeah these are yeah these are priests yeah okay um it's a it was a uh catholic school it was a jesuit school oh okay school. yeah so uh yeah to answer your question i mean my experience my own experience in film school uh and the things that i learned or maybe things that i learn now that i kind of wish i did when i was in film school is you can only you can learn uh, what's given at your disposal. You can read the textbooks, you can go to the classes, you can even take, a, you can even hop on extracurricular activities like making student films and uh, hopping on these uh, sort of student projects. But film school or not, you're gonna have to, uh, I guess, have the, you're gonna have to have the initiative to learn. You're gonna have to have the, um, as uh, Kevin Trudeau says, the teachability index, so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Your wishes, your commands. Yeah, I know what yeah. you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. It was at the beginning of that course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need to have this sort of teachability index, meaning you, your desire, your desire to learn, basically. And although you can get good grades in film school if you, you know, uh, you know, you know, do your projects the way the professor wants you to. If you don't, I guess, have the hunger, the drive to throw yourself out into more situations, like maybe, maybe like say if you're a film school student watching or listening to this, uh, and you want to think like, how can I really uh, make this uh, worthwhile? Um, like, you know, do what you what is expected of you, but also like 
states like if you're that driven to say like hey maybe um maybe i can take out the camera and then just uh you know try out this different uh thing with the camera i want to try i want to see how this feels in low light compared to this one or i want to um or i want to play a scenario out i want to write maybe a, a, a little script and i want to play this out or um or i want to use this light you know all these different things like these ideas that uh that come to your head um that's really where you'll learn most is by just doing it more yeah you know you just do you feel like the do you feel like the professors like created an environment where they encouraged people to be more like go-getters like more people to like be to have that curiosity to learn or was it kind of more of an environment like a typical school environment where you just show up and read your books and stuff like that yeah i think um Overall, I think the professors did want that sort of go-getter attitude. Um, even some of the professors I didn't like, um, that I don't think, looking back, were doing a good job. Um, I think overall they did want students to really uh, be go-getters and to really teach themselves. But maybe it's like when you're in that environment of, you know, classes, like you kind of just, you kind of become robotic just naturally. I think that's a whole thing across with school in general. You be kind of become this, yeah. in this, you go into this robotic state, just like, okay, teach me this. Okay, I get it. Write it down. Well, are you actually learning anything? <laughs> but there's certainly, I can say there were students that were very hungry and very driven to, um, you know, be really good at, or the best at their craft, whether that was camera or writing or directing. Um, and whether or not that transferred out of film school and they continued pursuing that as a career, uh, I don't know. I quite honestly haven't been in touch with a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But the professors, I think, did want to encourage that sort of environment. But it, it all, I think it all comes back to the student at the end of the day. Like we said, you know, right. your teachability index. And the professor can teach you so much, but... At some point or another, I feel like you're going to have to teach yourself. Do you feel, though, like the, the professors uh, did put in an effort to try to encourage students to be more excited about learning it? Because one of the things that I noticed when I was going to school, like not that I went to like a full on film school, like I did go to a community college and I took some video classes. Uh, that was about it. But I think generally like uh, teachers, um, they have to be excited to teach that. And typically how they make things exciting to teach is like being excited about the subject or just trying their best to keep students engaged and figure out ways to keep them engaged instead of just being, like you said, robot as robotic as the students can get about teaching it. Like, did, did you find that there is teachers that, a good amount of teachers that would do that? Or did you find that there's more teachers that were kind of like nonchalant about their teaching style? I think it was a mix. Um, I think early on the first set of professors we had in that film program were kind of, um, you know, I guess nonchalant, like you were saying. Um, they, you know, I think they focused a lot on just the course material and just sort of like, kind of like their way of teaching. Like they, you know, they didn't encourage, I think, it's important to know the rules, um, but I think they didn't encourage breaking the rules enough. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's an important element for any creative. I think um, I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, no, it does. It's like that's just a typical teaching method. It sounds like in film school. Pretty much, pretty much. I mean, yeah. Yeah, like, it's not like, um, it's also, and another thing is with film schools, there's kind of a gap, I feel like, with like, okay, we're learning all these cool methods of storytelling, and, you know, whether it's theory or just all these different ideas for filmmaking and telling stories, you know, we're watching back to back, we're watching like, you know, a, uh, uh, like a Gordon Willis shot in The Godfather or whatever, and we're analyzing it. But then as far as it's like, OK, well, at the same time, it's like, you know, this is a I'm, this is a degree here and I'm going to try and use this degree to get work somehow. 
and how does this exactly play out? Uh, and when you're when you're a student there, you don't exactly maybe think of this, um, but it's like how does this help with my degree? How's and how's the degree help me get work? You know, and you know, I came to find like a, a lot of students uh, that you know had already graduated or maybe. I was graduating with weren't necessarily pursuing um, something within like what we were taught, I guess. Um, I know that sounds a little vague, but I'm trying to think how I can explain like They this. weren't pursuing like a film related career. Maybe they were just entertaining or they're pursuing an entertainment field type of career, but they didn't know specifically what they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. I think like um, winning it almost. What's that? Like, like they were winging it or something? Yeah, and I was one of them. I was really winging it. You know, I think, um, yeah, I was, I was definitely winging it. We all kind of were. A lot of people went on to, uh, and they graduated. They went on to work for uh, big network news. Uh, a couple went on to uh, some pretty reputable companies like Blue Sky, Blue Sky Animation. Mm-hmm. That was a, that was one. Um, I'd have to. As far as like what they thought of film school, you'd have to go to them and ask. (laughs) But um, I think it's fair to say that a lot of people I have talked, kept in touch with some people um, in that program. And a lot of them kind of do, we do kind of concur at least to some level that like, yeah, I didn't really need to go to school for this. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. Cause like, I'll just say in my case, for instance, so like when I graduated from film school and I had, okay, I had a, I made a couple good films. I may, I learned some things with film, but again, I only learned, I guess, what I was willing to learn. You know, my, I guess I wasn't as hungry and as driven and I had a lot of personal problems, you know, in, while I was in college, you know, anxiety, things like that. A lot of college students didn't, I'm not trying to throw a pity party here, but <laughs> it, it wasn't a, I'll just say it wasn't really overall a good experience being in college. Like, um, I wasn't partying I wasn't going out having all much fun I was kind of just focused on just getting the degree just got it doing my work I just wanted the degree really that's it was just uh, a means to an end as far as I saw it and Mm -hmm. when I graduated um I didn't have a plan I all I knew was I had somewhat of an idea of like okay I do want to make films someday but like how do I go about doing this and I just spent a long time trying to apply for jobs where any job where I could uh, make money in film somehow. Uh, And it took about almost a year till I finally I got a job at a cable access station uh, about an hour or less away from where I live. It was the first job. It was the finally I just I got a job where I was able to make money shooting and editing. I didn't really care. It was like. But it was it was an okay gig, honestly. I mean, you know, it it wasn't look it wasn't like all that fun. It had nothing to do with like what I want to do for or what I'm trying to do right now. But I, at the time, I was just like, okay, I'm getting paid to just shoot and edit, just show up. All right, sure. <laughs> and um, yeah, and so I kind of was going into that. I was kind of after a while, I was like, okay, maybe I ne- I need to make more money now. So I just tried looking for just regular jobs really where you can shoot and edit essentially and you know i tried to like uh pose myself here tried to present myself like well for job interviews things like that but looking back now you know i realized like it didn't work out because it wasn't really what i want to do like those jobs they weren't really what i want to do and I didn't realize that honestly till COVID till that was like, okay, I actually, this is what I want to do. I want to have my own video production business. I want to be a filmmaker who makes, you know, edgy films for the types of clients that I want to work with, so to speak. Um, Cause they don't teach, they, well, they do teach this in film school, but the thing to keep in mind, I guess, for young filmmakers is that there's so many different routes you can go that you can take in this industry. And I'm sure you know this too. Like, you know, you could say, maybe you want to go 
Hollywood route and you PA on a bunch of shoots or you maybe you go corporate route or maybe you do like regular jobs like I was saying or you work for big networks like cable TV also like I was kind of getting into a little bit or you uh, sort of go solo and freelance and work on projects that maybe you want to work on develop your own business so I guess I was kind of figuring out for the past three years, like since I had graduated from college and up until the beginning of this year, kind of like where I wanted to go with it. Um, it was really just a, it was, it wasn't really a, throughout those years, I wasn't take again, taking initiative really. I think because I mean, a com combination of that, I didn't necessarily know where I wanted to go and you know, I just didn't, um, I wasn't hungry to just sort of like pick up a camera and just sort of make my own videos, I guess. Whole bunch of different stuff, but that's, so that's a real tangent I just went on. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I apologize. No, it's apologize. useful to know, it's useful to know those things, especially uh, somebody who's, who stumbles upon these videos and is like, I, I want to know if going to film school is worth it or not. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. here's this video. Maybe it'll be useful. And it's like you're kind of describing some things that's like only a person that went to film school would be able to talk about. Like I, I like like we said earlier, I didn't personally go, so there's only so much that I can say about it. But it is interesting to me to like get an understanding of like kind of what goes into it and like the the learning experience of go of going.